another quick question here. At that time, would they kind of record all in the same room? Uh, yeah, probably at this time still. Yeah, like and live live performance, and then they'd add tracks. I mean, I think maybe they were they were doing four track recordings at this point. You know? Okay, and then George Martin would maybe work some magic after that. But basically, though, they would all be playing live in the room. Yeah, drums would have whatever yeah. that muffling setup is and right, stuff right. like that. Okay, okay. Yeah, and in fact, I I think actually to tell the truth, I think they were still two track because. I know in recording school uh, that they were teach routinely the Sgt. Pepper record as a marvel of four-track recording, wow. and it may have been that they just got the four-track in. I don't know how George Martin did what he did with these songs. It blows my mind. To think Revolver might be a two-track recording is just <laughs> like, holy crap, how do you do this? <laughs> you know? All right, Drive My Car. Again, this, this, this seems to me like it should be on Revolver. I don't know why. Ask the girl what you want. So we have a blues here. One of the earmarks of the blues is, um, of course, dominant seventh chords. But when it's in the four position, that especially when it's in when it takes the place of the four chord, that especially is a very blues convention. I just had a student um, message me on Facebook, and he asked me like, what other positions can the dominant seven be used in besides the five position? And I gave him my, my basic theory, well, you could do it for a half step below the root, and you could do like a half step above the root. But actually, the truth of the matter is, you could virtually take any seventh chord and resolve it so, uh, back okay. to, back home. Okay. That's the nature of seventh chords. So uh, anyway, drive my car. He sings on the suspension of the chord, but the chord is still kept intact. But he's, here's the chord, and he's singing and this note. So not. The girl, what you wanted to be, and she said, Baby, can't you see? I want to be famous, a star of the screen, but you can do something in between. And there's our D7 sharp nine in the five position again, the Hendrix chord, uh, and then it releases to the six chord. There again, it's going E minor to C7. C7 was the four chord from before. Right. All right. So this is a very. So it's very classic five seven to five chord. It's a it's a secondary dominant. Anyway, um, the very blues based song "Drive My Car." Um, Harrison used the slide in that for the solo, which was like a probably the first time he's used a slide in Beatles music. So what did the solo kind of sound like? Uh, um, that's a. That's all done with slide. Right. right. And a slide, for all of you who don't know what that is, is just a, not for non guitarists, it's a metal piece you usually put over your third finger. It's a, and basically you use it against the strings and it gives it a kind of whiny, slidey sound. Uh, and that's actually very common. All right, Norwegian Wood, we're on a D chord, and uh, this is D mixolydian, so our scale, instead of going. So, now, where I was telling you about that cliché of like, uh, Alright, Lennon took it like light years beyond all those clichés by, by moving everything around a D chord in a Mixolydian mode, so you get the melody line, and he plays it against the D. All 
right now what he does is uh, very often Beatles songs will go to the relative minor key but in this on this record they start ex exploring parallel minor also Michelle explores parallel minor parallel minor means you're in the key of D major you jump right to the key of D minor all right now D minor is the relative key of uh, relative minor of the key of F major mm -hmm. so we're literally jumping uh, quite a few keys from a two sharp key to a one flat key that's quite a big distance to jump okay all right and but we're using as the excuse the common root between D major and D minor okay. so we get D minor going to G, which is actually D Dorian, and D Dorian is, is really from the key of C. And uh, we go, if that's the case, we're going to the three chord E minor of C to resolve. We go E minor, and in the key of C there is no A7, but in the key of D there is. So that's bringing us back in a very classical way to our D major chord. Okay. All right, so that's Norwegian one. There was a sitar in this particular one, right. and uh, so that was a new sound. Um, and I call. And then we have the release time after time. You refuse to be the listen. I wouldn't mind if I knew what I would listen. Yeah. That also had that sort of folk has that sort of folk feel of from the States. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I don't know about Dylan, but I mean Definitely folky. In fact, I think it was Rubber Soul that they referred to as their folk record. Oh, is that right? Yeah, which was a, a gross mistake on the part of the record companies. Um, so, um, You Won't See Me, that's basically it. The lyrical content is a Dylan influence. You Won't See Me, this idea of looking through somebody, you know, um, your mind's opaque. Well, that was actually a Harrison line, but they're starting to use, like, you know, um, you know three-syllable words in their songs now, um. you know. All right, so um, now we have Nowhere Man, obvious Dylan influence. Now this is not, there's no reference to love uh, as a love song in this. This is about, you know, the estranged, you know. This, I, for some reason, this always hit me as the Jean-Paul Sartre tune. Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> or, you know, yeah. The no, man is an, or, no Man is an Island, Yes Man is an Island. Uh, yeah, 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 right, right, right. Uh, nowhere Man is, uh, just like you want, you won't see me, by the way, the analysis is the one chord, 5, 7 of 5, but it, it does that trick where it goes to the 4 instead, which I, uh, there's, I don't know why this works, but it does. One reason, again, it's a line. Right? Mm -hmm. So you got C to D7 to F to C. Now we have a standard, very, 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 very common chord progression. 1, 1 dominant 7, 4, 4 minor. I mean, even Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds is a reference to this. Picture yourself in a boat on a river. You know? Alright, this is very, very common. In fact, they taught this particular string of chords in, in college, you know, as, as one to look out for, one to be aware of. Okay. Alright, so uh, Nowhere Man. This is very, very... Uh, this song is really conventional. There's nothing wild about it. He's, he's a real nowhere man sitting in his nowhere land, making all his nowhere plans for nobody. So under that string of chords, everything is sitting within the key except for that. And again, there's that four minor chord that we just saw in uh, "You Won't See Me." Very common resolution chord. So uh, making all his nowhere. For the release, no way. This is. Great. 
works of the three chord, which is very particularly um, melancholy. And again, he just got his new Stratocaster. He's using a different style of guitar before that. Probably the first solid body guitar he, he oh, used. Really? And of course, the twangy sound of the bridge pickup is he was just falling in love with that. Oh. I, I, I think I mentioned on the last time we talked about this that I tried over and over again to get the specific sound he gets in this song because it's just the cool, it's like razor blades. It's just this beautiful, sharp, you know, but not not disturbing, a really pleasing kind of sharp sound. Uh, anyway, so yeah, the solo... And he goes, uses the harmonic there. It's just a well-crafted solo. That okay. Obviously this wasn't improvised, he wrote it. George Harrison, I'm talking Her about. Okay. Think for yourself, uh, this is a great song. Alright, this is a George Harrison song, and again we get the quirky quality in his writing. So, it's starting on the B minor chord, but it's not really the home chord. There's the home chord right there. But again, like, like Lennon, a very circuitous route to get there, but in this case, much more, it's much more smooth-edged compared to okay. uh, Day Tripper. And by the way, they use the fuzz, the, for a fuzz box on the bass, which was also very new at that time. So here we get like a lot of, to of sonic experimentation. All of that bass line that he did. sort of thing. So the change is B minor to E7, which should take us right to A. It's a 2-5-1. But instead he goes... To get there, okay. To get there. Yeah, I was thinking earlier that this was in more along the lines of the key of D, but it's really A. Yeah, definitely. So, um... Seven bluesy. And this is a cool resolution. I think for yourself, cause I will you. All right, a lot of lot of cool uh, dominant seven substitutions. That's Harrison all the way. Got a little bit of a sour flavor to it. And he uses lines like, "Although your mind's opaque, try thinking more of just for your own sake." Again, that kind of Dylan-y intellectual lyric thing uh -huh. going on. You know. Sure. All right, so. Uh, let's see, what do we got next? The word. And you'll be free. Say the word and be like me. I don't know if that I have that right. Boy, this album has a lot of sevens in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, again, the blues influence, yeah. number one. Um, but again, also, like, there's a kind of difference between straight mixolydian and blues, even though both are based on the seventh chord. Um, so we're seeing hints of moving from that bluesy sound, moving into the more mixolydian... The, the, all right, the difference between blues and mixolydian is this. If I have a D7 chord... <laughs> you play a minor pentatonic scale against this. So you get that, that kind 
of sound. Mm -hmm. But mixolydian is, is kind of, pardon the pun, but it's kind of white bread in comparison. <laughs> they get that sound. Uh, within You Without You and a number of other songs, they, it, it, that hits on rubber, on uh, Revolver. Okay. That's so it's actually, is it safe to say it's a more sophisticated use of seventh chords? Uh, it's hard to really say that because actually blues, when you put the minor against the dominant seven like that, it creates more complexity than, than has been explained in music theory yet. Oh, okay. As I've been telling, I've been saying, I've been trying to find like a valid blues theory for a long time, and I can't find the one little oh. piece that really does it. I have a, a number of notions about it, but um, the difference here really is this, the third of the chord. In the blues, you it's called the blue note, instead of going... Here, let me show you. There's a third. But in the blues, you flat that, right? right? In the mixolydian, you don't do that convention. You go right to the actual third. So in terms of sophistication, you can't say one or the other. I mean, okay. because, you know, first of all, dominant seventh chords by nature are complex, or by nature are sophisticated in a way. You could literally, there are books just about the five seven chord. Okay. You know? So there's so much that could be said about it. Um, the mixolydian is, is straight. It's more establishment. The, the, uh, the blues is definitely a little bit, it's got, got a quirk. It's got some nice spices put into the stew, okay. you know? Okay.